The time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order. I ask you to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask everyone to please remain standing for a moment, and I'll recognize the superintendent. Uh, this past weekend, Labor Day weekend, uh, we were uh, given the news that one of our teachers here at Brockton High School from our vocational department, uh, Mr. Don Gillis, had unexpectedly passed away. Uh, he was a gentleman, and when you have close to 1,300 you know, plus teachers in the district, you don't get to know all of them, but he was one in his you know, four or five years here that I did get to know. He was wonderful, he was inventive with the kids, he was very involved in a, a lot of their activities. Uh, I know his colleagues here, uh, Dr. Murray, uh, our staff uh, will greatly miss him. We talked about it uh, yesterday at convocation, and the same today, I, I will ask you uh, for a moment of silence, please. Please be seated. As is uh, the case many times um, when Dr. Murray did speak to the family of Don, one of the first things that they talked about was his commitment to the kids at Brockton High School, how much he enjoyed his job and wanting to put together uh, a scholarship in his memory that will benefit kids for years to come. So again, um, Mr. Gillis's services are this weekend. Uh, at some point when his family is ready, uh, we certainly uh, welcome that opportunity so that his memory lives on uh, at Brockton High School. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, we normally open each meeting uh, with hearing of visitors. <coughs> Excuse me. Opportunity for members of the public to speak directly to the school committee, the superintendent, myself. Uh, no one has signed in to be heard this evening, so we'll go right uh, on into the agenda. Our next item is our consent agenda. The consent agenda is a number of items of routine business that are lumped together uh, for consideration together in the interest of expediting the meeting. However, any member of the school committee may request that an item be withdrawn from the consent agenda for individual consideration. So at this time, I'll ask if any of the members of the committee would like to uh, have any item withdrawn from the consent agenda. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion. We approve A, B, D, D, and E. Second. Motion's been made, properly <coughs> seconded uh, to adopt the consent agenda. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, this is our traditional first day of school, uh, school committee meeting. I think this is my ninth, but I'm still trailing Mr. Minicello. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it is a special school committee meeting. Uh, so much work goes in over the summer into everyone from facilities preparation to teachers to all the roles that all the different folks play from getting the buses to the bus stops and getting the kids safely to and from school to uh, getting learning started on the first day of school. So uh, at this time, I'll turn the meeting over to Superintendent Smith for her report on teaching and learning on this first day of school. So Mayor, I will be telling you that this was the best opening that we've ever had in the Brockton Public Schools. For the ninth consecutive uh, year. I, I'm so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> but before well, all nine weren't you. Yeah, yeah. That's correct, yeah. but I'll take that. <laughs> so before we do that though, um, I would like to invite up uh, Lieutenant Mills and we have uh, something very exciting. I know something that you have been yeah. uh, certainly on top of for our schools. And I have to tell you, uh, when I talk to other superintendents, uh, and we're all continually struggling with what we deal with, with safety and security, it is one of the pillars of our strategic plan, has been for a long time. I feel we're a district that is progressive. You know, we continue to learn. And when I talk to other superintendents, even in other large urban districts, I don't believe they have what we have. 
which is our school police officers under the direction of our Brockton Police Department, and it is just such a win for all of us. With the training that they go through, they're certainly well prepared, and I feel well, well protected every day that I am on the job and overseeing over 17,000 students. So, Lieutenant Mills? Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I'm here tonight to introduce um, the newest members of the Brockton School Police. Um, Lady and gentlemen, if you just stand when I call your name, the first person I'd like to introduce is Spencer Benoit. Spencer is a BHS alum. He's currently an active reservist in the United States Marine Corps. And as you can see, he's in uniform. He comes to us already academy trained as he's spent the last three and a half years with the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office. Thank you. Alicia Fernandez, BHS alum holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. She actually started with us a year ago. Unfortunately, Alicia started the police academy and after 19 grueling weeks had to go to the hospital. Uh, she injured her foot and she could not finish, which means unfortunately on Monday, September 10th, she will start all mm. over again. Sorry, Alicia, but we're glad you stuck with it. Uh, we stole her from the Department of Children's and Family, where she worked prior to coming with us. Adilson Andrade, Brockton High alum, finishing up his bachelor's in criminal justice at Westfield State College. He currently works with us at the public schools as an access control specialist at the front door. Uh, Adilson's always been a worker holding down a couple jobs. As he's been working for us, he's also been holding down a part-time job as a communications dispatcher for the Stonehill College Police Department. Thank you, Adilson. Jonathan Drain, bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Bridgewater State College, is currently a campus security officer for Nobles and Thayer's Academy. Thank you, sir. Mr. Donnell Campbell. Rockton High alum, associate's degree in criminal justice, finishing up his bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and is currently a public safety officer at the Good Samaritan Hospital right here in Brockton. Thank you. And the last student officer to start the academy this Monday on the 10th is Michael Gomes, also a BHS alum, has a master's in criminal justice from the University of New Haven, Connecticut, and is currently a campus police officer for Framingham State College. Well, I probably shouldn't say that. You probably resigned already, right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for Lieutenant. And then could you just update the school committee? We've been operating shorthanded on school police for a while now. Our numbers are down, uh, but what the effect of getting these officers will be when you get them on the job in about seven or eight months? It brings us back up to where we were before we started to get, um, you know, I hate to say it, but we were fleeced. You know, we lost an officer to a competing town. We had a couple officers transferred to the city side police department. Uh, One's currently working in the day division, the other one on the midnight division. Um, the school side offices are down. You know, we're shorthanded. We pull together the best we can, but um, it, it's not the numbers I like. These folks will give us the numbers that I like. Granted, we still got to wait for them to complete the academy. Uh, I'm confident that they'll all do well. They, every single one of them interviewed phenomenally, and it's probably the first time I had a background investigator come to me and go, hey, listen, you're going to have a problem. I said, what's that? He goes, they all look really good. Yeah. I said, well, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, things happen. We had another officer leave us right while we were doing these, these backgrounds. So I'm very gl grateful that the committee worked with us and we have the ability to hire them and that they're going to start the academy on Monday. And, and I think it's important uh, for folks to know, although these are not traditional civil service hires like we would have in the police department, that you know these candidates have been through a very thorough interview process a very extensive background check the same background check that any brockton police officer would go through and um, you know as i heard you list off the backgrounds i don't think we could have a, a more qualified group of folks coming on board with us all i heard about was uh, college degrees and, and criminal justice experience and many already working in the field and one officer already on the job. So uh, congratulations on having such a great class of recruits for us, Lieutenant. Thank you, I appreciate it. Does anyone have a question or comment for Lieutenant Mills? Mr. Minicello. I would just, just like to say, you know, welcome aboard. Um, you know, many of you obviously are alumni, um, which I think is uh, great. Obviously, you know, the culture here in Brockton, um, you were part of 
part of this uh, campus, and um, you know, we just welcome you and uh, you know, want you to feel good about working you know, in your, a lot of your hometown, and um, we know that uh, you'll do a great job with, uh, with the students, and you know, a big part of working with students, as you know, is developing relationships and trust. And um, you know, you're going to be you know, a school police force with students, and, and, and you know that uh, emotions with you know, kids in their teens can, can be um, interesting at times. So we're sure that you'll be patient with them and um, welcome aboard. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Lieutenant Mills, I was taking notes. I, I believe you said all six of five cadets and officer of Brockton High School graduates. Uh, one, two, five of six of five Brockton of six. High graduates, yes. Five of six. I think that's really, really important. This is a unique place, and having been here as a student, I think will serve him extremely well to come back as and police just, officers. Just, the committee, just for a point of interest for the committee, the one candidate that uh, did not graduate Brockton High has long roots in the city of Brockton with a family that was raised in Brockton and a father who recently just retired from the city of Brockton Police Department. Go. All right. I also would like to welcome our recruits. Um, so many of you are familiar faces. Uh, again, you have been part of the Brockton Public School family. Uh, we certainly will welcome you. I do want to ask Recruit Campbell, who was your favorite teacher at the Downey School? Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's not fair. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. I looked up and I saw Melinda and I said, oh, Melinda's visiting tonight at the school committee meeting. And then I did the double take. Uh -huh. So I'm so excited to have you here. Very good. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lieutenant. My pleasure. Thank you. And uh, now to kind of open up um, about uh, opening day. So I'm gonna ask June Saber McGuire to join me. I'm gonna switch seats and go okay. over here. First of all, before I can talk about opening day, I do want to talk about the opening of school. So um, each year we have our teachers come back on what we call convocation. Uh, last year, of course, we were dealing with a, a $16 million budget deficit. We asked the teachers to work together to go above and beyond. And I do thank uh, a couple of our school committee members were able to be there, so you were able to hear the convocation speech, which truly was about the work teachers had done to get us through a challenging year, and indeed they did. And we had some wonderful things that I'd like to share with you happen. We talked about perseverance, because that's what this is all about. We have worked very hard to make sure that our class sizes are becoming uh, a little more reasonable, making sure we have supplies and materials and teachers in classrooms. So let me uh, start by talking about uh, Brockton Public School Cares. And you will hear Dr. Murray talk about the senior class doing a very special project which will actually go into the football game this coming Friday night. But what we did ask all of our staff to do was to come back to school and support one of the senior class activities uh, with the Charity Guild Food Pantry and collecting canned goods. So our uh, teachers uh, were asked to bring canned goods to convocation. Here you have the teachers uh, entering, all 1,300 of them coming in. Uh, again, they weren't sad faces. They were very happy to be back. You can see uh, your teachers uh, in the auditorium, and it truly was a packed house. It is really interesting when you're standing up on that stage looking out, and you don't have enough seats. You actually have people along the sides uh, uh, sitting. So again, the teachers are back. We're going over what the initiatives are for all our strategic plan. This was one of my favorite events. This is a, a new, um, you see, it's a amazing educators. So our new commissioner, uh, Jeff Riley, is talking about teachers all over the state. And the first teacher 
to grace the billboards, which are going to be in Western Mass, Central Mass, Eastern Mass, all over, is our own uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Robinson, who is a teacher at South Middle School. And along with Dr. Robinson, what we did do, and you see up here, and I will be inviting, there are 13 teachers that received what we called the Gold Apple Awards. So last year when we opened up, we talked about teachers getting Red Apple Awards, which we gave over 100 of them last year. This group are the Gold Apple Awards, so we held off on that award until opening day. And at the elementary level, we've got Colleen Crehan from the Baker, Maria Fonts from the Davis School, Mustafa Muhadeen from the Downey, Kelly Reardon from the Gilmore, Andrew Fantuccio from West, Anna Gonzalez from Pluff, Michael Robinson, as I mentioned, from South Middle, Germana Rodriguez from East, James Jim Burley uh, from Brockton High School, Social Studies, Linda Goldberg, Brockton High School, Special Education, Joanne Jody Nelson, um, one of our instructional resource specialists at the high school, and Deirdre D. Smith, an English teacher at the high school, along with Terry Finnegan, a teacher uh, at our Keith Center. So this was, uh, again, a very moving ceremony, and uh, I was very pleased to offer. These are exceptional, outstanding teachers in the Brockton Public Schools who mentor other teachers, teachers who are involved with student activities, and truly who go above and beyond for both their colleagues and students and our community. Now, this was something very special, so let me, let me tell you a little bit about this. So whenever I talk to, and I mentioned this yesterday, and if those of you have heard me say this once, I'm sorry, but I'll say it again. Whenever I talk to Deputy Superintendent Thomas, and when it's snow days and I watch other superintendents dancing and singing on YouTube or a number of different things, I always say to Mike, why don't we do something like that? And he says, we're not fun, we're all business. <laughs> so I took the liberty this time of always wanting to put on a very special musical on the stage at Brockton High School. And I always hear the music is too difficult, I hear the dancing is too difficult, and of course that's West Side Story. And this is the 100th birthday of Leonard Bernstein, who is the composer of West Side Story. So we came up with, and I want to give you a little background, I chose some very special people to do this, and this is how I chose them. I was at um, a an event last week with our professional development with all our principals and assistant principals. And when the morning started, I asked the assistant principals and the assistant deans to stand up. And I asked them if they were good at snapping. And all of them played along and snapped, and I told them that was great, they needed to join me at the Brockton High School Auditorium uh, on Friday for practice, and practice we did. So we practiced a very special song to the tune of When You're the Jets from West Side Story, I know, Mr. Minicello, you told me I should watch out for copyright, so thank you. You can defend me. So we came up with Brockton Kids Count, and I gave you the lyrics, and I want you to know these are your Brockton public school administrators uh, and some teachers that I worked with over 40 years ago. You'll see Bob Bowen, uh, Donna Cormier from the Hancock, uh, Jane Faroli. These were pre people I started with. June was upset I didn't ask her to come on board. That's not true. She did ask me. <laughs> I said no. Respectfully <laughs> said no. So I don't have any rhythm. in two hours, they sang, they danced, and this was the ending to our convocation. So June, hopefully we can play I this. That is my cheerleading jacket from 1979, by the way. Coach jacket.
shirts from all, so this of course is my favorite. This is East with the maroon color. We had the blue from West. We had the purple from North and the green from South. So those were our four colors. It brought everybody from the city together. It showed us as one team and again, was a lot of fun and I think a very successful way to, to start the school year. So on to the school year. Excuse me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just wondering, um, Deputy Superintendent Thomas, I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, we're all business, now we have some fun and you don't want to do it? <laughs> There's a lot of fun things going on. Here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of buckets to fill. He was busy. He was busy with the blue buckets. I was just going to say the same thing. He was busy with the buckets. I, I would like to point out for the record that the um, tape didn't um, get everyone in the picture. And there was a gentleman on the very end of the stage on this side wearing a Burgundy East T-shirt. And he kind of looked like our CFO, Aldo Petronio. <laughs> in fact, I think it was Aldo Petronio. So uh, he, I so, didn't realize so my, he had rhythm. Our CFO has rhythm. Well, my favorite in the square step, and I hope you were really impressed with that step, hmm. that Aldo would get his legs crossed and couldn't quite figure out how to get out of that move. <laughs> so, so he opted to, to stay. He was such a good sport. We, we had many good sports. Uh, assistant Principal Nick Molinari, and you probably can't see, but he's there with big sunglasses on, and... Uh, and everyone kind of put their, their own favorite spin on it. So it was a lot of fun. And every once in a while, I think we have to start the year that way. So on to the first day of school. So day one, and this is a beautiful morning. Uh, the heat really hadn't set in. It was warm, but thank goodness it was perfect day. Parents taking pictures, uh, parking lots very crowded. Most parents very patient. Um, and again, a, a successful, certainly, uh, Principal Val Brower Foot and her team. This again is our Lowe's lockdown buckets preparing for the first day. You see Deputy Superintendent Tom is busy at work. So he and I hopped on a team with all of the Lowe's workers who were busy filling well over a thousand buckets and it was a competition. So in the end, I was not happy we didn't win. Things weren't organized enough on our team, but, but again, just a great job. I can't thank Chad enough from Lowe's and uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas will talk about that later. This again is a parent with their uh, child heading into the baker. I have to tell you all, this is, uh, you have the teachers again with their signs with, you know, sometimes it's a new school for kids, uh, teachers getting acquainted with uh, students. I think that, does this bring everybody back? Because I can remember this myself and I'm not talking as a teacher getting excited about the first day meeting that teacher for the first time. our beautiful children. Again, bus, kids coming on and off a bus, making sure they're going to get on the right bus on the way home. This youngster here is coming to us from Port St. Lucie. So he just left Florida, warm temperatures, and really came to a place that was just as warm. He's in for a surprise. <laughs> this is our Renee Powell at the uh, Baker School. And I have to tell you that what uh, Principal Brower did was put, um, when you walked in, she kept the office area clear for the secretary to deal with the new kids coming in and had an area for extended day or if people had bus questions. So it was very, very organized, very well done. This is the, these are the fifth graders at the Baker. You can tell they're very excited about being the fifth graders and their first day. I have to tell you the uh, building itself, and it is one of our newer schools, was absolutely spotless, just beautiful. Teacher Lynn Collins, getting her class together. And I purposely went in, and Deputy Superintendent Thomas and I talked all summer about the work being done. The work being done in the schools, some of the security measures that were taken in our facilities. You'll see a little bit about that when Deputy Superintendent Thomas talks to you. But in talking to the custodians and thanking them for their hard work, every one of the executive team members went to different schools throughout the district today. And we made sure we stopped in, we thanked our custodians that are part of our Brockton Public School family. This, of course, right away was our Chartwell's food service crew. The, you know, right away, everything smelled great, apples, oranges, everything ready to go. They had already fed kids breakfast, lunch was already going. You would think that we were not on um, summer break. 
this was coming to East, and uh, those of you that know East, this is Jay Miller, who is going to be doing a special show about the Brockton Public Schools. And it is going to be our campaign this year to choose Brockton, choose the Brockton Public Schools. So Jay is talking to Nori Harris, Michelle Connors, um, a bilingual coach and our associate principal at East. He's gonna be going to many of the schools and actually showcasing our schools for parents in the community uh, in Brockton. If you go back to those doors for a minute, and again, under safety and security, it was, can you go back one or? No, it's just plain. No, I can go back. Oh, okay. So the doors here, this normally would have been the guidance office that when you walked in, you would have been able to go past those doors. That would have been that big foyer at East when you walk in. This now provides that extra measure of security. You can't get through those doors. If you're a parent coming in, you might have to drop off a lunch. There's a little window there that you can drop off or you can have conversation. So it really slows down any foot traffic. If people do not need to come into the building, and I'm sure parents join us in making sure that our perimeter stays safe. If obviously a parent or community member needs to come in, they'll be buzzed in. But it gives us that extra layer, not as many people coming through that uh, corridor, and you'll see this at a number of the schools. Again, down into the cafeteria, thanking them. They were already serving pizza to the kids and, and well ahead of the game at East. At every school, you were seeing the same thing. I purposely went to this room. So Mr. Minicello, you went to East Junior High at the time, and of course I taught at East Junior High. And this was the last classroom I ever taught in in the district. And it was an old art room. And I can remember when I got the room assigned to me, I had to paint it. It was such a mess going into it today. It was a beautiful science lab, a beautiful STEM laboratory with the uh, coats, the science uh, scientist coats on the side. The kids were very excited about the year, so I really enjoyed visiting that class. And this was one of our uh, Gold Apple Award winners, uh, Germana Rodriguez. She is the art teacher. Kids were coming down that hall at East, and she was welcoming them along the way. This is our Parent Information Center today, and they have had over uh, just this month with inquiries, with registrations, over 20 300 people in and out of their doors in one month. Today they had 65 registrations, and this was the line when I came back to the office at about 12.30. They closed for a while this afternoon and reopened up uh, again this evening. Uh, I think they were closing at 6.30, so they still were registering and will be open again tomorrow morning. They do want me to let you know uh, and to let the public know that right now we have halted kindergarten registrations. We have a little over about 1,100 kindergartners registered at this point. And remember, we've pulled back the date by two months this year. Uh, but the reason I'm saying that is to get all of our elementary through grade 12 students in. We will be taking kindergarten registration starting next week. So for this week, we will finish up and make sure that we're able to get everybody on board. Uh, when people come, and for many reasons, they come last minute. It could be just coming into Brockton on September 1st, renting a new apartment, buying a home, so many different reasons that they're uh, signing the children up at this time. So um, again, the uh, students are not able to start the next day. We have to make sure we clear records, et cetera, make sure we have all the information so it does take a couple of days in case you get any questions about that. But they've been very busy. Thank you to uh, Dr. DeBarros and all the members uh, of our Parent uh, Registration Center. We actually ended up sending over additional people from central administration today to assist them when the lines got this long. Next. And that's it. Okay, let me switch back. Madam Superintendent, how is that building working out for both uh, registration and you know, the mayor could talk about city purposes as well, but do you think that it uh, is serving its purpose and? better location than when it was in Central? Not even a question, because what you have um, is our you know, parent registration. It is a center. It's very close, of course, to you know, our Central Administration office. You have parking. So parents, it was a little difficult today, I, I have to admit, when you talk about a day like that and you see the lines out the doors. So parents are using the parking on the street with the meters. We, of course, do have our downtown parking garage. 
we do have our parking spaces over at the parent registration center, but it is a well-oiled machine. You go in, they fill out a form, um, they have windows that they go to depending on, it could be just a question that they're asking. You know, it could be finishing up records. Or there are many uh, ways that you're directing. You know, I, I don't want to compare it to the registry of motor vehicles, which I think has really changed over the years as far as how they have been more customer friendly. So I would say our parent registration center meets the needs of whatever questions our parents have. Um, I know that we have had superintendents bringing teams from other urban districts in our state. I believe uh, former superintendent uh, Matt Malone was here about, I think, a week ago with a group from Fall River visiting again, I think, for the second time, our parent registration center. We had people from New York, communities from New York, coming here and visiting again what we do here. So as usual, um, I think we started this a number of years ago. We continue to improve it. But the purchase of that building, I think, was uh, something that was a huge benefit to the Brockton Public Schools and, and I would say uh, the Brockton community. Yeah, someday you may talk us out of the other half of the building. Oh, that's right. We do share that with City Hall. The health department is in there if we're growing. I think you actually got more than half, though. I'm, I'm sure that is exactly, I'm sure that's exactly what happened. The building's worked out very well. It was a vacant bank for many years. Perfect fit right between the school department and city hall. So let me get you some of the numbers. So a year ago, on this day, so this is not our October 1st report. I don't want anyone panicking because that number is so important to us. But a year ago, we had 14,794 students that were enrolled. This year, September 2018, we have 14,971. We are actually up at this point 203 uh, registrations. And again, um, that does include where we're at with kindergarten right now. And that's a number we're watching. I anticipate that number is going to be lower this year and we'll pretty much recoup that number in the next couple of years. Um, one of the things you also know in talking about those uh, numbers is kindergarten will be starting on the 17th and I'll be able to more accurately report because we have a number of registrations that we haven't even put into our database at this time. But we are gonna be opening up, we have two teachers for four preschool classes. So we're looking at the numbers and I think when parents realize, again, as we start to focus on kindergarten and when we have our preschoolers, we actually thought we would be hiring four preschool teachers, that was our goal. So at this point, it is at the Arnone School. There are two classes. The teachers will teach uh, half-day sessions. They're very excited about welcoming in the Brockton Public Schools. Now, we have had some preschoolers that went along as um, peers uh, for our children at the, uh, presently at the um, Barrett Russell School. So this is a little different. These are for our typically developing uh, preschoolers, our four-year-olds, and some of them, again, will be turning five, those are your Burr babies, your November and December babies this year, were who we were focusing on to start. So I'll have a better and a more accurate number once we open up those preschool classes and we will be very careful to monitor if we have to add classes, we're very very poised to add them probably at the Downey School, which was our plan uh, last spring when we were talking about this. So that really was uh, opening day. Um, we're also going to have uh, Chief Academic Officer June Saber McGuire working with uh, Dr. DeBarros to take a look at the balancing of numbers. You know, as we um, took our sixth graders uh, out of a North Middle School with the idea that this month we will be applying for Mass School Building Assistant funds to, to totally renovate and possibly add to our North Middle School, we took those students and we dispersed them throughout our other middle schools in the district. So the numbers are a little bit higher at South, at East, at the Ashfield. We were out today, we are looking at some class sizes that were very reasonable, others that were a little bit higher. Ashfield is highly selected school. So we again will, and I asked you this, to let us open school, let us get through a few days, let's make sure all the registrations are in, and I'll report to you what the average class size is. But we have to wait to see who also shows up at our doors. It isn't just about those enrolled. We have to look at the bodies that are actually there or have they transferred out to another school. So I will get back to you uh, as we uh, go, through, go through that. Um, as I said, the buildings were absolutely uh, beautiful. The kids were already working. Teachers were teaching. Uh, the routines were in place. 
and uh, we did have, and I'm going to invite, I guess, up at this time, uh, let me invite uh, Dr. Murray up first to talk about the high school. So I will have him come up and talk about Brockton High, and then Deputy Superintendent Thomas has quite a few areas to talk about. Good evening. So it's uh, very exciting, the first day of school. And uh, today I thought was fantastic. It was actually nice to be able to give students some help and point them in the right direction, compared to last year, which was not the case. Um, first, I want to thank a bunch of people that made today possible, the custodians, the grounds crew, um, naturally our teachers and staff, the people in Chartwells. We had a lot of support this summer with HR because we had people uh, retiring, people leaving, and of course, as you well know, the, the budget issues. So it, it takes a team to get a place this size going, mm -hmm. 67 acres, you know, 455,000 square feet. But uh, we had people painting right up until the doors opened this morning. So uh, a really great team, and, and I, I wanna make sure that they get credit for how our school uh, looks and, and how it feels. Today we had about 3,600 students report to school for the first day. We have approximately 4,100 registered. And as we were looking at those numbers, they continued to grow. It was kind of funny. Um, but it was, it was a great first day. The students, very, very patient today. Uh, we had some issues with some construction on Belmont Street. The parents were fantastic. And uh, it actually kind of helped us avoid huge uh, lines and uh, it was a pretty smooth process. So in all in all, um, a, a great start. Uh, we're already looking at doing something this Friday and that's why I asked the superintendent if I could speak to you again. Um, the students in the school are very engaged in their community and uh, we had some suggestions, some ideas last year about ways to do that. This Friday night is our first home football game. It's important to note that we had soccer uh, golf and volleyball tonight, but our first home game is this Friday. And what we are doing in, instead of um, selling tickets is asking folks both from here and the team visiting us is from Lexington to bring maybe a couple cans of food. And we've partnered with the Charity Guild on Main Street and it's our goal to give back to the community at the start of the year. And we're looking to maybe collect anywhere from five to maybe 7,500 cans of food kind of set the tone here at Brockton High. The students are very engaged in this, they're very excited, and the folks at the Charity Guild are very appreciative in working with us. So it's black and red out Friday night. Uh, you have some t-shirts. We've been distributing those to everybody we can. We're gonna be giving a bunch of those away Friday night, and um, I think we've already got kind of a good buzz about what's going on. So we'll have the band there. Typically the band is not prepared to uh, perform at the first home game, but we twisted uh, Mr. McCready's arm, and so we'll have a halftime show, and we're looking forward to a really kind of an exciting start to our school year. It was a great day. Can you just announce the time? Uh, the game uh, starts at 7, and so uh, we'll, the gates will open as they always do, probably about 6 o'clock, and uh, we can use both gates, so folks can you know, donate at either gate. We are giving away 500 t-shirts of like the ones that we've dropped off here this evening to the first 500 students with IDs. Valid IDs, not temporary, but uh, trying to build some enthusiasm. We've got a great group of uh, young men and women in all our sports, and I think they're a nice representative group of the kids that do so many other things. And so it's just a great way to recognize Brockton High and our community, and uh, very much looking forward to, to the start of uh, what we hope is many other things to come. Questions? questions? <laughs> I actually have a quick question. Uh, sure. So how did the early start go this morning? Um, it started earlier than normal? No, not really. We, were, we had breakfast today. Um, Chartwell's again, much as the superintendent said, it looked like, uh, you know, they've been humming right along. Uh, a special thank you for yesterday. Teachers reported and they actually set some stuff up for our staff because of uh, the, the loss of our, our colleague. Um, but today really was very smooth, about quarter of seven. Um, again, the traffic a little slow on Belmont Street. To start, that's the way things go. Everyone handled it uh, beautifully, and it actually allowed us to kind of 
avoid huge backups as students got their IDs and schedules. The schedule, like everything else, is very fluid, and we actually reprinted schedules uh, late yesterday because we felt that some students' uh, schedules may have changed with the addition of some staff members late last week and uh, some other changes. You're good. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Also, when Dr. Murray talks about you know staffing, um, also I want to report to you with our human human resource office. It is uh, a yeoman's job when you're talking about teachers that have been uh, reduction in force. When you talk about bringing teachers back, when you're talking about trying to properly staff with uh, the changing uh, of numbers at just the middle school, so it is a lot of work. So we did have teachers, or we did have uh, long-term substitutes in pretty much every one of our class across the district. We do have on what we call the school spring website, and I know you're interested in this. So once we got school up and going, our focus still is teachers, but we're making sure we have teachers in the classroom. On school spring, we have right now job advertisements for the monitor teacher assistant positions, and I know we have about 22 of them. So those are for people with a bachelor's degree. You do not necessarily have to have a teaching certification certainly an interest in working with kids of all grade levels. We're talking our youngest elementary, uh, middle school, all the way up through high school. We have 30 paraprofessional positions, which is, again, assisting our teachers uh, in the district. There are some requirements there or things that we can help you to prepare for the requirements. Uh, we also have, I believe, an administrative assistant uh, job at one of our schools. So please go on School Spring. We will be starting to focus. I know Dr. Moran has told me we do have a number of applicants and we'll start to work with our principals to get that support staff uh, on board. I know they are looking to do that. So any questions on the hiring process? Okay, and I'd like to invite uh, Deputy Superintendent uh, Thomas up to go over transportation. And I do see uh, our Chief Budget Officer Aldo Petronio came in. So uh, Mr. Petronio, they were asking for an encore from uh, yesterday, I told them you were great with the, the square step. No idea what they're talking about. <laughs> well, Mr. Mr. Minicello said he saw you in the back. I was working the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were. That's your story and you're sticking to it. <laughs> I like these skinny microphones. It's like um, Gene Rayburn or something, you know, from the old, the old days, like a 70s microphone. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right, so um, school transportation, I'll start off with as um, the first couple of days, actually the first week, it's, it's always, it's, you know, it's rocky. Um, you know, buses run a little late, the uh, new routes. Uh, sometimes there's um, people change addresses for the van pickup and um, they don't forward it to Parent Information Center, so sometimes the van has to then track down and go to the new house. So, you know, routes probably run anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes late. Um, there may be one or two that ran 20 to 30 minutes late um, in the afternoon, in the morning, but overall uh, we were all clear today by um, 4.50. Um, the, all the principals called in and all clear. Uh, we had 48 buses and 51 vans to transport 8,344 students. Um, I want to thank the mayor, Larry Rowley, Chief Crowley, and Lieutenant Mills for their help with the um, construction on um, Belmont Street. This is not a city project. Uh, we're at the mercy of the state um, <laughs> who told us long ago that they would be well past Brockton High by September, but obviously that didn't happen. So I want to thank the cooperation of the mayor's office, the police department, and the DPW because they have a liaison that they work with, with the state and uh, they're really pushing them and helping us you know get by I also want to thank for a student um, with dr. Murray um, for a student was able to send some vans and buses back down Belmont Street to pick up any kids that walk uh, and now that the kids are in school we're actually picking up kids at every crossroad between Brockton High on Belmont Street and the Cumberland Farms um, when you get to the Cumberland Farms right over the the highway overpass so so we're picking up kids in the morning and in the afternoon we're dropping them off any kids that walk down Belmont Street because there's no sidewalks they're all ripped up um, they have helped us with moving barrels around but I thought we thought it would be much safer to have for a student um, there is that little extra block of time between the um, 
the first tier and the second tier, so they were able to help us out. And in the afternoon, with a lot of students that stay for sports and after-school activities, you always have extra room on the afternoon buses because you, know, you have almost a 1,000 kids that, that stay back and do activities. So they were able to use a full bus to run those kids back down Belmont. So that is a big help. Um, and then hopefully this project moves along and it, we can get it out of the way before the winter. Um, as far as the um, new security entrances uh, that the superintendent mentioned, uh, this summer we did new security entrances, which are lobbies. Um, parents and visitors now have to come into, they get buzzed in, and they come into a lobby area without access into the building. Uh, they go to a what we call now a bank window where they are you know, helped by um, a member of the office staff. And if a parent is there just dropping off a lunch, filling out a permission slip, or leaving a student's gym clothes, they can do all that through the window. Obviously, if, this, if the parent has a prearranged meeting, then they would be buzzed in and then have a meeting in the office. But it just you know, really limits the access to, to people getting into the buildings and just going, you know, going down hallways. And so it's really changed and helped a lot. So we did that this summer at the Ashfield, the Downey, South, East, and Pluff. Last spring, we did the Davis and Raymond. This fall, we will be doing the Angelo, the Unknown, the Kennedy, and West. And then I'm working with um, Ken Thompson and some architects on what we can do with some other buildings. Some, a lot of these buildings were um, not easy to do, but we were able to do without um, compromising the egress, obviously, of these, um, the exits. The other buildings that we need to do more study on it takes a little bit more construction, and that's when you have to be careful because you can't change any of the egress points for main entrances. So we'll continue to look at um, look at those schools as we move forward. Um, and that was pretty much it for the first day as far as, oh, and Chartwell's. I'll do Aldo's part. He usually does Chartwell's. But Chartwell's served 5,551 breakfasts, and they served 1,482 lunches today. Um, so, and they, like you said, that you saw them this morning in the afternoon and they were ready to go. Well-oiled machine. Yes. So again, parents, um, you know, if you need to uh, register, the Parent Information Register uh, Registration Center is open um, and we will get the records processed very quickly, get your children in. And uh, I'm gonna be very pleased uh, this year when we do talk about choosing Brockton. So you heard me talk about uh, yesterday, uh, opening day, Choose Brockton. And one of the things we're going to continue to highlight for all of our families is all the things that we offer in the Brockton Public Schools, from our TAG program to International Baccalaureate to uh, advanced placement classes to uh, athletics to music to drama to the arts uh, to our, our wonderful curriculum. Uh, there are so many things that we offer to people in our city and are always very proud of our schools. But we will be getting out there and certainly messaging that uh, to uh, everybody at our open houses. And again, our theme this year will be Choose Brockton. Um, also, well, uh, Mr. Oh, I'm Sullivan, sorry. do you have any, uh, any complaints or early kids that were early or kids that were late for buses? Oh yeah, we, we get calls all the time. Yeah, the, the transportation line is constantly being called throughout the day where buses were late to the stop or um, either picking them up in the morning. Or it's usually tier two and tier three. Usually the high school, it runs, it's the first tier and buses don't, you know, they really don't fall behind. It's also for the, we tell the bus drivers to stay at the stops a little bit longer than usual. Usually they stay up at stop, the stop and they'll wait three, four minutes for the students to get there. Now we ask them to wait five, six, seven minutes to make sure students make it. So, um, yeah, we, we, we have complaints, and we um, Peggy Kalea does a great job dealing with them, and we try to remedy them quickly. And usually, again, by ne the middle of next week, they'll smooth out, and everything will run smoothly, and then they'll be thrown off again when the kin kindergarten starts, and it will throw it off for another week, and then we'll be back to normal again. But I mean, we... I, I visit first student often between August 20th and the first day of school, and you know they're great, they've been great to work with. Um, and unlike Boston, all their bus drivers came to work and, <laughs> and didn't leave us with 50 buses, uh, 50 routes, and kids standing around. So, I mean, they had their bus drivers trained and ready to go. 
Um, and I think that they, um, their retention rate in, in the first student brought in um, depot is really good. There's a lot of bus drivers that have worked in the Brockton um, first, with Brockton first student, and a lot of them are Brockton residents and they care about their job and they work hard and they care about the kids. So, um, you know, they really do a good job and, and they're committed to the first student of Brockton. So that really helps us a lot. I had two calls today and they both were, the bus was on time. They couldn't believe it. Oh, wow. That's good. So Tell them the two, call. We like those calls. Two too. <laughs> That's great. No, that's good news. Nice job. That's good news. I think today was smoother than previous years, but again, it's always, you know, the first few days, it's always a little rocky with buses being laid and things like that and addresses being off, but, you know, we work it and smooth it all out as we go forward. Nice job. Joyce? Um, how did we do with some of the um, changes as far as the bus stops? I know Ward 6, we had one, one bus stop change. How'd that go? That was fine, uh, parents, and it was good because Peggy ends up calling all the parents two weeks before of the kids that she knows. So that went over well. So Perfect. she knows, so basically she, the kids that she knows that were at that stop last year, um, she calls the parents and lets them know two weeks before that the bus stop is <coughs> not going to be at this. It's going to move down the, um, the street a ways. We had a change probably about um, six or eight bus stops this year, and again, we do that for safety reasons. Um, we go out through the summer and look at some stops we might have had problems with last year or um, a police officer will call us or um, the traffic commission will call us and say you know this is not you know we probably need to move this stop so we work well with them so we probably I think it was eight stops that we ended up adjusting but not too far away just to make it more safe thank you yep. mr. Minicello how are tardies handled due to bus delays in oh they should all be excused yeah, especially the first um, two weeks of school. Yeah. Yep. The first student always calls ahead to the school, or they'll call Peggy and say, can you tell them bus 26 is late? And then if it's at the high school, the deans are notified, um, and the kids are given excuse tardies, and for any other school, that um, middle school and, and elementary as well. So they should all be excused if that's an issue. So I would encourage the parents if they're to call the school if that becomes a problem or if they see on the parent portal that their son or daughter or Max Toddy, you know, because it was a late bus, they should just call the school and it will be taken care of. Good, Mark? Um, there was a, um, Joyce, thank you for reminding me, you mentioned um, buses and bus stops. <clears throat> um, the end of last year, there was an issue brought up with a bus stop um, uh, on the south side. Did we make any progress on that? Is that still kind of being worked on? Um, it, with the South Lane, was it South yeah, Lane? Yeah, yeah. I think Southworth. we South Southworth. Worth. I live on South. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, I think it's been settled. It I has. worked with the mayor. I, th I think I'll check into it tomorrow. I haven't had one complaint about it. Okay. Um, I didn't hear. But I'll check. I, I'll check with Peggy again tomorrow. Um, but I'll I'll ask and find out and make right, sure. Let's just confirm that. that I'll was... give you an update in uh, the packet Friday. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll check on that tomorrow. Else? Okay. Um, also, some good news, and believe it or not, I've felt this summer so differently than last summer. Uh, we were notified uh, just yesterday that we had in uh, 21st Century Community Learning Centers supporting additional learning time grant approved for South Middle School for $175,000 for this year. So that is added to, um, and I'll have a full list for you, but we will add South to our um, after school, uh, 21st century after school program. So we're very excited about that. And I keep getting calls from principals. It could be a $10,000 grant here. Uh, Principal Marcia Andrade Serpa contacted me this week about um, some additional money to bring scientists uh, into the school on a monthly basis for students. So this continues to uh, happen, and again, unlike uh, last year, this is certainly good news for our district. So this will be in your packet, and I will keep you updated. And that is uh, really under my budget update at this point. I have no other budget updates other than um, the grant. Okay. So on uh, a bittersweet note, and I think you're aware of this, but 
It is September. I've put it off as long as I can uh, to talk about Wanda, uh, who is uh, retiring uh, after many years in the Brockton Public Schools in a lot of positions, certainly serving as your school committee executive assistant, and she is retiring uh, in January of this year. So she I. She was just starting to get the hang of it too, Wanda. <laughs> 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 she, uh, I don't know how, uh, you know, in coming on as superintendent, this is starting my sixth year. Um, I had Wander and at the time uh, Donna Migdal, uh, now Patty Belchunas. They are such a professional staff. They handle many, many phone calls, m you know, complaints or parents with issues that we work very hard to solve. Um, you know, they are really certainly you know, our top uh, administrative assistants in the district, and they deserve that title. They have done an excellent job together. You know, I've worked with Wanda a lot of years, not just as the executive assistant. I could not do my job, and I would venture our whole executive team would say the same about the support that they offer so that we're allowed to, you know, do our jobs to make sure this district runs the way it does. So they are going to be huge shoes to fill. Mm. Um, what I will do this um, week in your packet is put the job description. We've changed it a little bit. So when we have uh, both uh, Wanda and the other executive assistant pretty much working as a team, I mean, this is the school committee's executive assistant, but they do work together on, we've had so many, you know, subcommittee meetings, they, they divide the duties, they come early, they stay late, they're there on weekends, uh, they just have done yeoman's work. So I do want to get this out as soon as possible to offer time to transition into the job to make sure uh, we would have to go through, obviously, a vetting and an interviewing process. So I will be putting this uh, in your packet. And please, um, if you have any suggestions, please read it over. And um, I will let you know when it's ready to go out once I get back everybody's information. And that's all I have tonight, Mayor. Okay. <clears throat> about items to refer to subcommittee. Any uh, members have an item they'd like to have us list for an upcoming subcommittee meeting? No? Okay. How about new business? We should have meetings on Wednesdays more often. We seem to be making a much better pace here. <laughs> I just Sullivan. had one item on new business, if I could. I wanted to mention the uh, summer movie family night, which is Friday night. This Friday night coming up at 7 o'clock. The movie is a Disney movie called Frozen. It's a free movie, free popcorn. There's going to be neon necklaces and bracelets, bracelets for sale, reasonable. Uh, it's the last hurrah of the season. Please bring your blanket or chair. There'll be soda and water available. It should be a good time. That's... Uh DW Field Park. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's at the gazebo, DW, 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 DW Field Park. All Thank right. you. No, I know that the last movie you had there was extremely well attended. So, yeah, great, we had great family event, plus, we'll be able to start a little bit earlier now with getting dark a little earlier. It, the last event was about two weeks ago, or a month ago, and we had about 300 people. Wow. So, we're expecting a good turnout again this time. Awesome. It's for families to bring your kids. So it's this Friday night, which is the 7th? Correct. Starting at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Okay. We'll all be at the football game, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> the families with the little ones can go and see Frozen. That's a great, it's a great movie. It's <laughs> good. No, it is. It's a great, it, we've had a number of the family movies at different venues outside around the city during the summer. And uh, the fun. Great events, great venues, particularly in some of the different parks and playgrounds. And uh, I think we still have another one coming up now that you remind me. Uh, Saturday evening at the Mulberry Playground, there's also a family movie being put on by uh, Psy Iota Omega. Sorority is sponsoring that one. So, so the, for people who can't make it on Friday night or they have such a good time Friday night, they want to go again Saturday. on Saturday night, Mulberry Playground on Saturday night. All right. Any other new business? I just wanted to Choice. say... Um, I had the opportunity to, I was actually at Brockton High this morning. I haven't been at Brockton High that early since I graduated, I believe. So I was here a little um, before seven. Um, Were just, you here that early then or? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was a bus student back then. <laughs> so um, it was nice. I, I, I actually came oh, here um, early in the morning to see how things were going. 
and then I headed off to Ashfield. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Lovell over at Ashfield for having me. It's my third year. I love welcoming the students back. Uh, and just seeing some really, you know, big smiles, and you saw some sad faces that weren't really happy to be back to school. Um, but just a lot of happy faces, eager, a lot of uh, sixth graders excited to start at Ashfield from so many different areas of our city. And then uh, I had uh, Jack Lally actually uh, join me this year as we welcomed the students, and then we headed over to Brookfield as we welcomed um, the students over there with Ms. Masson. So everything just ran smoothly. Uh, parents, uh, you know, Brookfield's a tough one where you have, you know, just it, it, the parking lot's not an easy parking lot. So um, I just want to commend them and just say that everything ran so smoothly. Um, and I just want to wish everyone a, a wonderful and amazing 2018, 2019 school year. Um, just happy to be part of it. Awesome. Anyone else? Tom? Well, I don't know if the superintendent wants to demonstrate the Lowe's bucket for the public. Oh, I we oh. brought the bucket. There you go. Deputy Superintendent Thomas, this is yours. Oh, I thought we didn't let the seat. Do you want me to? Sure. I have I was mentioning today um, on one of the Good Morning, I think it was Good Morning America, they were talking about school safety being such a growing industry. And you know all of the research going into it. They realized that school districts have older buildings, newer buildings. They talked about districts being innovative, progressive. And as I said, I always feel that Brockton continues to be well trained, train their staff. We started out with that yesterday with all of our staff, and we introduced our blue buckets. Uh, yeah. So this started. Lowe's asks us for a project every spring, just something that we, they can do for us in the summer. So this was something that we worked together with the um, Brockton Police Department, the mayor's office, um, to basically put these buckets together. The way that we train our teachers now is the run, hide, or fight um, method of, um, of lockdown, stay in place. Unfortunately, we have to talk about these things. We have to train our teachers. Um, obviously, the, what we teach our teachers and in Lieutenant Mills' training video is that if they decide to barricade in the room and that's the safest place the teacher decides um, to keep the students, then you grab everything you can in the room and barricade the door. Tables, chairs, um, file cabinets, grab cords off of, um, you know, electric, you know, off of IV, I, I, you know, the IT carts and do whatever you can to wrap the door with cords and make it more secure and an extra barricade. So. The idea was let's find some things that we can provide for teachers. Um, teachers keep them in a place, uh, I just want to make it clear, these are just not out on display and anywhere in the room where kids can get their hands on them. They put them in places that they can get to them um, and they know where they are. And as Mil Lieutenant Mills trains, when people are panicking and things are, bad things are going down quickly and people have to make quick decisions and their heart rate is up, um, you kind of lose your fine motor skills. And instead of a teacher running around the room looking for things to help barricade the door, this is, they train that they know exactly where these things are. So basically, I'll, we have rope. Some of our doors open in, some of our doors open out. So the rope, if the, obviously if the doors open out, you can tie the rope onto the door handle, bring it across the other side of the room, tie it down, and actually it's more of a barricade. Or if you start to put things against the door, you can also tie those tighter against the door with the rope. Um, the hammer could be used um, in the wedge for doors that um, close from the inside. You hammer the wedge under the door as an extra barricade. If a teacher's on the first floor and they decide to, that it's safer to run, uh, as you know, our windows probably only open in about 12 inches, that's safety. Um, but it could be used to break the window, get the kids out through the window, and obviously if they're on the first floor, if they feel that's the safest thing to do. And then um, finally, there's duct tape that could be used to, if, you, if the shade in the room is broken, out to the hallway and you need to hang something on the door as a hiding, um, as if you decide to hide, you can duct, duct tape the window up or duct tape a jacket over the window. If you need to secure the knot that's been tied onto the door handles, you can wrap that in duct tape. 
if you decide to break the, the window to get out, maybe they have enough time to duct tape off the shop edges so people don't cut themselves as they're jumping out the window. It's just something that we train our teachers and our staff to make quick decisions. Um, right now, the way we train is you have to have your own plan. So when we do stay in place and lockdown drills, the teachers spend about five to 10 minutes at the end of those drills talking to the students about what the plan would be if something happens, if we go to a stay in place, if we go to a lockdown, if we have to run, if we have to hide, these are the things we would be doing. And who better to talk to kids at the age level that's appropriate than the teachers that teach them every day. So that's, that's what we teach kids, that's what we train our staff to do. And I think with, um, with Brockton's always been ahead of the, the curve when it comes to school safety. Um, we've spent a lot of time talking about this um, for several years. Um, and and it obviously you saw the news, you know, really um, blew this up. And we're getting calls now from across the country that saw it on national news. And I've talked to people in Texas, Colorado, California. So, you know, it is getting a lot of play. But the bottom line is it's nothing that, um, it's a sad thing that it's our reality. But, you know, when things happen and then three months, six months, a year goes by, people tend to forget the bad things that happen. And, you know, we just can't rest on school safety. It always has to be on the front burner. Unfortunately, that's um, the reality we live in and we can't hide from it. Um, and we have to be proactive and think of things all the time. And there might be people that brainstorm other things that we should, we should have in classrooms that help kids, keep kids and staff safe. So, you know, this is something that we work together again with mayor's office, the school department, the police department, and we're always looking for ways to uh, make our schools safer and more secure. And uh, the superintendent did mention there's a $72 million budget from the state uh, will be it's a competitive grant from the Department of Ed and we will be applying for that money some of the money is for um, you know mental health social emotional learning which is very important with school safety as well but other you know some of that money is also for um, the physical uh, the physical plant of the building making it more safe so um, pretty much that's that's it in a nutshell just want to thank Lowe's for being a great partner in the city um, I mean we have approximately 1,100 classrooms, and they provided every classroom with, you know, the um, tools and the uh, bucket. Um, I thought at the convocation, Lieutenant Mills did a great job. Um, you know, the last 15 or so minutes of the um, program was his um, reinforcement, I would basically say, about, you know, stay in place and lockdown and protocols and, you know, what to do. I think it's certainly for the new teachers that have never been part of the Brockton Public Schools, it's good for them to see it for the first time. But for the you know veteran teachers, I think it's always good to have that reinforced so that it is sort of second nature, you know. Um, so that was great. And um, the other thing is that I felt good for the superintendent that all 13 uh, Gold Apple Award winners were in the audience and came up for their awards. <laughs> Mike, Mr. Thomas would. and I had bets on how many weren't going to come up for their awards. They were, we, you know, we, it we was, both lost. I loved when I had a number of them reach out to me and say it was a complete surprise. You can never do a complete surprise. I've learned that. But they were very excited, very appreciative, um, you know, just, just a, a great group. And every one of them was there, and it was a surprise. Mm. Nobody was alerted. Oh, it, was a, it was a very good convocation. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah. Mr. Thomas, I just wanted to say, 10 years ago, you never even would have thought of this. I mean, it's, it's a nice idea. I don't know who thought of it, whether it was you or Kathy Smith, but it's What's a fabulous him? idea. No, it was, a it was a bunch of people. We work, always work together with school safety. I mean, we, again, as um, the mayor was with me, we visited Lowe's and we were thinking about some of the things to put in the bucket. Um, we work together closely with the police department. The fire department's always been helpful. It's always been a team, so I wouldn't take credit for, for the whole thing at all. Um, it's just a constant, for the eight years that I've been in the position of worrying about safety and security, it's always been a team effort and then when we have our safety and security meetings with the school committee uh, again those are always helpful we're always thinking of things together so I think it's the team 
that helps keep the school safe because it, it just can't be me or the superintendent or the mayor. It's all of us working together. And we've always had great cooperation with the Brockton Police Department and the Brockton Fire Department. Um, they're always constantly running drills for us, inviting us uh, to be with them. I mean, for an example, the fire, I got an email today from the fire department. I helped get two buses donated, old buses from first student. They donated to, to the Brockton Fire Department. And over the next few weeks, they're actually going to be doing uh, emergency rescues and um, different things with those two buses. And it's been a, it's a huge help, so I thank First Student for that. But these are the things that, behind the scenes, that the police and the fire continue to work on. So, you know, I really thank uh, the other city agencies. And we always come together in meetings, and um, the mayor puts them together, and, and we always come together and meet constantly about safety and security and it's again it has to be a team effort otherwise it's not successful it's just a great idea and it's great to be prepared and hopefully we'll never use them yeah i hope they just collect dust in the closets and wherever the teacher decides to put them hopefully they never use them i yeah, mean it's, it's a good idea exactly and i i said this 26 years ago when i started in education it was the last thing you thought about but now you have it's the first thing you have to think about is the safety of kids and You're right. these things thank you Standing. Anyone else? No? Well, I'll entertain a motion then. Motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Okay. Motion is made properly. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>